Good morning folks, I trust you're well. We're working through our Bible reading challenge for a source of encouragement and something to think on as we go day by day as part of our regular devotions. And today we're looking at the second letter of John. It's a single chapter, it's a short letter. And I want to just preface our reading of it today just by asking you a question. Who doesn't like encouragement and also being warned when there's perhaps a pitfall coming our way? Well, sometimes we're not so keen on the latter when we think we, we know it all. <laughs> I think that's fair to say sometimes. Um, but we have both encouragement and warnings in the letter that we're going to read today. It's a nice short letter. This is what we make of it. Second letter of John, towards the end of the Bible. And we'll read it in its entirety. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in love and truth, sorry, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. Now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the Antichrist. Watch yourselves, so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. Whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I come, hope to come to you and talk face to face, so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. So this letter is short and to the point. Um, there's encouragement there, encouragement particularly to walk on in that truth of Christ and the love of God the importance of that, and if we have that, if we have that love of God, we have both Father and Son. It might be also be implicitly said that we have the Holy Spirit as well. So why is uh, John writing this particular letter? The difficulty is that, well, there's two things, the encouragement, but also the difficulty, that there are those who are deceiving people at this time about what Christ is all about. And they're really detracting from the love that they ought to have for one another and they're backbiting one another and they're going out into different congregations with different teachings that are both confusing and offending people as well. And so John here writes this letter to, to caution people about just that. This is the first of two letters where John calls himself the elder or the presbyter. For those in Presbyterian circles you might understand that a little bit uh, easier as to what he's actually meaning. There are groups of of elders here that are trying to teach people and encourage people and, and help people along uh, the way. And so certainly John is viewing himself as being the elder, the presbyter here. And he's writing to the elect lady. Now whether that is the church as a whole as herself is one question, but given the very end of this letter where he says that the children of your elect sister greet you, it might be that he's talking uh, more specifically here that he's writing to um, a woman who is leading a congregation in the place in which he's writing. He's writing to an individual and that um, the the children that are with her might represent the other Christians in that area. So that's the two, well, there's a third, third view as well that he's talking about the congregation as being the elect lady and the children being those who are in that congregation. So three possibilities. The church in general, um, a, a congregation, whichever congregation reads this, because it was a general letter that went out to many, but, but a, a letter that was receiving this and, and the people in it, or actually to the one who's leading that congregation, this elect lady 
and her children, either her house, immediate household, or the Christians that are found within that place. And there's again um, encouragement that there are other congregations here, uh, children of an elect sister. Um, whether that again is a literal sister or a sister congregation is uh, is kind of anybody's guess, to be honest with you. Bottom line being that there are Christian communities all over the place that John is in contact with and they're sending an interchange of encouragement here of exchanging greetings and exchanging encouragement but the basic basic encouragement is you know the love of God live in it that's the commandment you have obey it it's not a difficult command but it's a vital command and don't be swayed by people with other views. In fact, in the, the hospitality culture that people had there, where they would invite people into their homes and, and anticipate that A, they're on the same page, and B, that they would share all things in common. But actually, there were people doing the rounds even at that time who they would be wiser actually not letting into their homes, not letting over the doorstep because of the doctrines that they had. I don't know about you, but there are people who sometimes come and chat the door and want to get in over our doorsteps that have doctrines that aren't um, conforming to the, the essence of what Christianity is about. Uh, and so, too, we've got that admission here as well. But in all things, let us love one another and show that love of God to all. More details of, about that we've had in the last few days in the first letter of John. I think it probably goes without saying that there's an expectation that that letter has already, already been read, because this one really is quite pithy and to the point. With those reminders in mind, let's have a wee word of prayer and uh, continue on with our day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your timely reminders to, to love one another, to, to keep that command that we might both uh, enjoy your love and show it to others, but also that we should be, take great care that we don't have that snatched away from us, that we don't find ourselves distracted by the things around and about us. John hoped to see uh, those he loved very shortly. He didn't really want to write an awful lot with pen and ink at that time. And we feel that way also ourselves at times, especially at this time of pandemic, when we may have been separated by a distance from one another. At best, we might have a phone to be able to communicate with. Or maybe we do receive a church newsletter or a letter from one another. We pray that we might be blessed by these things. But at the same time, we have that heart longing. that We might love one another in one another's company by seeing one another and encouraging one another. As well as at times warning one another of the things around and about us as well. We have so many health warnings at this time. And we wouldn't want to ignore those. But at the same time, one of the greatest spiritual health warnings and spiritual health encouragements is that the love of God is there to fill our lives and to bless us and to bless those with whom we come into contact with whatever way that that contact might be. Help us to be true Christians in that sense that we have Christ and we have the love of God that we can share with others rather than necessarily picking over the details and finding ourselves led astray. Help us then, bless us, for we ask these, say, these things in the name of Christ, and to your matchless praise. Amen. Hope that nice short letter is a blessing to you. We can look at the next letter, the, the third letter of John tomorrow. Please do continue with us, and uh, let's continue to encourage one another this way. But until the next time, God bless, take care, and bye for now.